my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you think Christ was actually believing he was forsaken? Or do you think maybe there was a message? Well, it turns out when you go into the word definition for forsaken, which is only found in the Mark version and in the Matthew version, it means to leave behind. Hello. You see, if Luke's is the bride, so the first will be last, the last will be first. Matthew, Mark, Luke will become Luke, Mark, Matthew in the Synoptic Gospels. What do you think they're going to be crying out? The purple and the scarlet. My God, my God, why have you left me behind? They're being left behind. They weren't prepared. They weren't repentant. They weren't diligent. They weren't loving and seeking the Lord, loving their brothers and sisters. They weren't as Enoch was. These are incredible, incredible pieces to understand. But as you guys know, these are just the tip of the iceberg, right? We were talking about even, um, uh, how about this one? We'll touch on, well, we can even touch on, I'll probably just be going all sorts of areas. So how about this one that we've talked on many times, Jonah? This is one that stumps everybody. How could they be the same story if in Luke chapter 11, with the story of Jonah, Jonah, Jesus says he, as the son of man, is going to be a sign as Jonah was. Well, what kind of sign was Jonah? He was a 40-day warning to Nineveh. This hasn't happened yet. It was prophetic. It has not happened. When Christ resurrected from the dead, he wasn't going around warning for 40 days. When Jonah warned for 40 days, it was at the end of those 40 days, bang, they were going to be destroyed. Not 30-some years later, which wasn't even 40, by the way. You see? It never was fulfilled yet. This is what he's going to fulfill when he comes for 40 days after the escape and the wedding that's going to take place during the 50 days. How about when you go to Mark and you see the difference with the story of Jonah? This is where everybody gets stumped up. Listen to this. They sigh deeply and he says, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall be no sign given to this generation. And he left and entered in the ship and he left. People have never understood this. This is how powerful it is that I'm telling you right now. This has never been understood for centuries. People use these scriptures here to tell you that this book was written by men not directed by the spirit and that it's corrupted because look at what mark said well how about what matthew said matthew chapter 12 in matthew chapter 12 he tells them that no sign shall be given except the the sign of jonah the prophet and that jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth so what what is the world of church told us the world of church has said jesus at his resurrection represented those 40 days no he didn't because he didn't do as jonah did and they'll tell you this was his when he was dead for three days and three nights And what they'll tell you to justify it is that any part of one day and any part of another day is called a day. So even though it was really a day and a half, a little bit of one day, one full day, and a little bit of the next, that was three days. No, it wasn't. This doesn't say three days. It says three days and three nights. That means 72 hours plus. 72 hours is what that means. This was not fulfilled yet. How do we know? Because when you go to the story of the resurrection, the angel tells them. And this is why the, the, that video in the intros with the comma and is so important. He says, remember when he told you, listen to this, Luke 24, verse 7, that the Son of Man must be, so he said, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. That's the beginning. 
comma and, meaning separation of events, but added together. Be crucified, comma and, the third day rise again. You see, he wasn't three days and three nights in the grave. It was a little over a day and a half. There's no way to justify saying the third day he rose again when the entire story of the third day when he rose included him being taken into the hands of sinful men, being crucified, then being put in the grave and resurrected. That is not, even the entirety of these events was not a full three days and three nights, let alone being in the grave for a full three days and three nights. This has stumped people for centuries. But you know how it can be justified? Because everybody reads from the Gospel of Matthew. That's why that video on It's All Because of Matthew is so important. When your entire foundation is from Matthew and it's written to the Jews, which most of the world knows, they're learning from the perspective of the Jews. So Christians that talk about pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib, the reason they're doing it is because they're learning from Matthew and they're saying the seven years of tribulation is to the Jews. Well, they're right in where they're thinking. The only problem is because they never understood who Mark was, they think the tribulation is only seven and that they go pre-trib. You see, what they don't understand, that means they're at the end of Mark and Matthew's time is about to start. The end of Mark is the rapture of the great multitude between the sixth and the seventh seal. And when that's over, guess what happens? Seven years of trumpets is to Matthew. And that's why when you read at the end of Matthew's discourse or at the first portion at the end of Matthew 24, at the coming of the Son of Man, that is post-trip. But the group at the end of Mark were the ones that went in the great multitude rapture. That was the end of seals. The ones that go before it all begins is Luke's group. And that's why Luke's discourse is so much more different than Mark and then Matthew's. You see, 